praise Him. It is the living that praises the Lord. Lift up your voice. Let Him hear you. Acknowledge His presence. Acknowledge His goodness, His faithfulness. He is a merciful Father. Lord, we praise you. We exalt you tonight. We glorify you. Hey, la misuturia de yekuria du satalelemo. Father, thank you for your presence. Thank you for your tangible presence, Lord. We give you praise, Lord. We exalt you. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord. Tonight, I'm bringing the word just to give us an exaltation tonight. But before we go into the word, I want to read to us Luke 18, 31 to 34. Then he took the twelve aside and said to them, Behold, we are going up to Jerusalem, and all things that are written by the prophets concerning the Son of Man will be accomplished. For he will be delivered to the Gentiles, and will be mocked and insulted and spit upon. Verse 33, They will scourge him and kill him, and the third day he will rise again. Verse 34 says, But they understood none of these things. This saying was hidden from them, and they did not know the things which were spoken. Before we go into the word tonight, sometimes when you read these things, can you not understand it? To us, it looks like what was Jesus was talking about is death. And guess what? The disciples did not understand. So sometimes we are listening with our spirit man. When the word is coming, the, the word comes to heal, to deliver, to save us. It is not for us to just listen to the word and make it, oh, it feels good. It was a good word. What are you doing with the word that you listen to? How is that applying into your life, into your everyday life? And so tonight we are going to start with praying. Jesus started with prayers and he ended with prayers. And we are going to pray tonight and say, Father, give me understanding. As your word come tonight, let me not miss your visitation. Lord, I am praying tonight that when you speak your words, it is not me that is speaking the word of God. It is the Holy Spirit that is speaking tonight. Let me not miss it, Father. In the mighty name of Jesus, lift up your voice and pray. Pray for the spirit of understanding. Pray that the Lord will give you the spirit of understanding as the word comes tonight. You don't want to miss it. I don't want to miss my visitation. Ah, Lord, give me understanding. I ask, oh God, that you give me understanding to understand your word. As I read the scriptures, Father, give me understanding of your word, oh God. It is what you understand that you will put into practice. It is what you understand that you will do. This is what you understand that you will obey. This is why the understanding is very critical. And so, Father, in the name of Jesus, we ask for the spirit of understanding, oh God. Tonight, oh God, give me understanding, Father. I am asking, I don't want to hear the words of any woman tonight. I want to hear your words, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You may take a seat. Thank you, guys. <laughs> Amen. So tonight, we're going to be talking about living wisely. Living wisely. And so, I want to share with us, when you are reading your Bible, there are, th there are three things you should be looking out for. You should be looking out for the promise of God. What has God promised you? When you look through the scriptures, when you're reading any scripture, is this talking about the promises of God? Or is it talking about the principle of God? If God is asking, what is God talking about here? Or is he talking about the prophecies of God? Tonight we're going to be talking about the prophecies of God. God loves us so much that he puts these prophecies in place so that we will know the times that we are in right now. In 2 Peter, verse one, 2 Peter chapter 1 verse 19, 
And it say, because of that experience, we have even greater confidence in the message proclaimed by the prophets. You must pay close attention to what they wrote. For their words are like a lamp shining in a dark place until the day dawns and Christ the moving star shines in your heart. What is this scripture letting us know? It's letting us know that we have to pay attention. Pastor has been teaching us and letting us know, look up for your redemption is here. Look up. You know, some of us, we just think, oh, it's one of those messages. No, the times are counting down now. Jesus can come at any time. I know it's a message that some of us, we've heard the messages over and over, and we're like, oh, we've heard that before. But what if Jesus comes now? I was sharing with them in my group. I said, I'm not ready. <laughs> as much as some people are excited about Jesus coming, I personally, I feel like I am not ready. I'm like, because I know the things God has put on my heart. I haven't even done them. <laughs> and when he comes, he's not coming to punish us. He's coming to reward us. Right. So it is whatever you've done that you will be rewarded for. Because sometimes some people, the way they preach it, like, oh, God is coming to punish you for not winning 1,000 souls for me. You know, it's coming with the reward. Reward is different from punishment. Amen. And so in these last days, I want us to go into the book of Acts chapter 2 verse 17. It says, and it shall come to pass in the last days, says God, this is God speaking, that I will pour out of my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions. Your old men shall dream dreams. This is God speaking of himself. He said there is going to be a massive invasion of my spirit on earth. But guess what? The enemy has his own plans as well. The enemy knows that this is God's plan for us. That he's going to pour out of his spirit. This is the spirit of the Lord. This is why pastor has been saying that it is easier for us to pray now than it was six months ago. It's easier for you to study the word of God than it was six months ago. You know why? Because God is pouring out of his spirit upon all men. On his children. Look what the enemy is doing as well. In 1 Timothy chapter 4 verse 1. It says, Now the Spirit expressly says that in latter times some will depart from the faith. Giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. Spirit of deception. Doctrines of demons. God is pouring out the spirit upon all men. So that's why, so that we can see visions, we can prophesy, we can dream dreams. And the enemy is out there putting out doctrines of demon and deception. Have you, have you seen the deception going on in the world? We are in the latter times. Which one is Church of Beyonce? Have you guys seen that? Have you seen Church of Beyonce? You haven't seen him? <laughs> it's a real church. Ask Manuelita. She can send it to you. <laughs> Manuelita is my plug. <laughs> you see, I can always use her as an example because she won't get offended, you know. And she, you see, but I'm saying that we are in the last days. Like people are beginning to worship idols. They don't even know. Yes, there is Church of Beyonce. You see, in the last days, this is the time people are being deceived. One, what did I see the other day in the, um, I think it's in the Methodist church, that you have the pastor or whoever to be gay. Now the gays are coming out boldly. That's not what God intends for he to be. When God created man and woman, he said Adam and Eve and not Adam and Steve. And so when we see these things now, we are used to it. You know, when the, 
when the media was throwing it at us, you know, enchantment was going on. Now you see two men kissing on your TV. You don't even look away. You're just looking at the adverts like, okay, yeah. You know why? We've been dumbed down. We've been desensitized. We don't even recognize these are the last days. When you look at these things happening, you know, and I always tell women as well, and I'm coming for them tonight. Because we are in the last days. You see women, you see how immorality has increased. You see the way that women expose themselves. They open, you know, what they are supposed to cover, they just open it up. You know, you're opening your breast and you're showing off your breast and you're showing off, you're showing off your behind, you know, like that is all you have. And that's not who you are. Your nakedness doesn't define you. I have to tell women all the time, when, listen, when I became born again, I'm not judging. If you do that, just, you just need to grow up and mature. When I became born again, um, still a baby in Christ, that was when I met my husband. And um, there was I-5 then in England. I don't know if he came to the States. You know, you guys had Facebook. And we had I-5. And I had my picture my, I was showing my cleavage like this, <laughs> and I put it on there, I was posing. You know what, my, my husband was still my friend then, and he said, why are you exposing yourself like this? You are worth more than this. This attention that you are looking for, you don't need it, right? And at first I was like, that's none of your business. You're just a friend, you know. Leave me to... I, I'm telling you, ladies, I was like that. I was exposing myself. But that was a man that was telling me, men look at you like this and they think you are a sex object. When you present yourself like that. And he said to me, he said, you are a very wise woman. I know you. You don't need to present yourself like, oh, I just need to show a little bit. You know? And so... Can you see the increase in that? You see teenage girls now. They don't even wear bras anymore. Do you know where they started from? Remember how we used to, what out we used to have everything underneath. They started taking it off. Now you see teenagers don't even wear bras anymore. And they are walking like that. Do you even think one day this will be happening? Do you even think one day you will see men Two men getting married. Two women getting married. Do you even think it would happen? Now it's happening. We are in the last days. And what does the Bible expect us to do? I want us to go to Ephesians 5. I am reading the New Living Translations because he explains it better. Sorry, guys. <laughs> For people who like King James, I love King James too. Actually, let me read King James before I go to the New Living Translations. Ephesians 5, verse 14. It says, therefore, it says, Awake, you who sleep. Arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. Awake, you who sleep. We are going to be praying tonight. In the areas that you have been sleeping, that you will awake is it in the areas of you interceding for your children? Is it in the area of your marriage? Is it in the area of your calling that God has called you? Each one of us, we have our own calling. You know, some people will say, I don't know my calling. I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing. But you go to work and you know what you're supposed to be doing at work. You don't even know when they tell you this is, what you're, this is the expectation. You know that. But when it comes to your calling, you say, I don't know my calling. I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing. And we have become lazy Christians. It says here in verse 15, it says, see then that you walk circumspectly. This is why we're reading King James. I love that English. <laughs> Not as fools, but as wise. Redeeming the time because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. And do not be drunk with wine, in which is dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit. 
speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, and making melody in your hearts to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things to God the Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And so, I, I read that because of second speckly. <laughs> so, let me go to the New Living Translation. It says, Awake, O sleeper, rise up from the dead, and Christ will give you light. So, be careful how you live. Don't live like fools, but live like those who are wise. When the Bible is encouraging us here, he said, be careful how you live. Are you careful how you live? What does it even mean to live, live carefully? What does it mean to not live like fools when the Bible defines who a fool is? He says, a fool is the one that says there is no God. So when you say there is no God, do you have faith in God? Sometimes I wish I had a board to just put it like that. When you say, oh, I believe in God. My healing, the Lord will heal me. Do you truly believe that the Lord will heal you? Or the next minute when you have these pains in your body, you start to think, you know what? I can't sleep. I, 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 oh, if I don't take my wine, I can't go to sleep. Are you sure God is your healer? Do you still believe in God? Or you need that wine to go to bed every night? And so this is what puts me to sleep. Or do you believe that God, he gives his beloved in sleep? This is what it means. Are you living carefully how you should live? In all areas of your life, are you asking the Lord, God, what, what are my expectations? What am I supposed to be doing? What have you called me to do? Because some of us, we are living like we don't have a calling. Your calling starts from your home, by the way. How you love on your husband. How you love on your spouse. How you do, how you treat your children. Are you living according to what God has called us to do? He says, don't live like fools. Fools don't care how they live. <laughs> That's what the Bible says. It says, don't live like fools, but live like those who are wise. Who are the wise ones? Your wisdom comes from the Lord. Your wisdom comes from above. It's not the heavenly wisdom that you use. It comes from God. No matter what area you are looking, <laughs> the wisdom of God is in the scriptures. This is why he said to Joshua, he said, meditate on my words day and night, and then you will have good success. Whatever you need, you need to sit down and meditate on the word of God. Some of us struggle and say, oh, the Bible is boring. I was glad when I was speaking to a sister earlier today. She said, I'm reading the word of God. It's so sweet. I was like, yes, praise the Lord. This is what I desire, that we are reading the word of God. And it's sweet, like you can see yourself in the word of God. If you are still struggling to read the word of God, you are not living wisely. If you are still struggling to pray, you are not living wisely. This is what the Lord is telling us today. He says, we have to be wise. Make the most of every opportunity. This is Ephesians 5.16. It says, make the most of every opportunity in these evil days. These evil days. If you think the days are not evil, don't know about you. Don't go on Instagram. Don't go on Facebook. <laughs> Even amongst ourselves, the things that are happening in church. I was sharing with Pastor Moses. I said, there is, um, I was watching a pastor, I think in January, and the pastor was so angry. You know, I think... Um, some church members were talking about him and his wife, and he came online. He was teaching them, you know, and he was so mad. He was so angry. He was like, listen, when they come and talk about me to you, just come to me and ask me. You know, the pastor was talking, and um, I was sharing with Pastor Moses. I was like, oh, they, they visited that church as well. <laughs> 
the way he was talking, it sounded so familiar. That's what I wanted to do when the enemy came at communion house last year. I wanted to come and just stand here and curse them out, you know. But I, my husband would not do that. <laughs> pastor Moses, I always call him the merciful pastor. You know, sometimes when we are listening to songs, if the songs don't glorify God, pastor will be like, change it, change it, change it. They are cursing too much. Like, not cursing using the F words, but, you know, like using scriptures to curse. Pastor would say no. So I call him merciful pastor. But this pastor that I was listening to, he was so angry. He was so mad. Like how could church members lie against him and his wife? This is happening amongst us. Not here now, praise God. The Lord has uprooted them out of communion house. Amen. You see, but we've been through that as well. These are evil days where we are jealous of one another. You see someone have a great marriage. You see their children are trained in the way of the Lord. And you are jealous. Read the word of God and do it. You don't have to be jealous of anybody. God has said it. He said, he said train up a child in the way it should go. And it will not depart from it. It's, God is expecting you. Train means you train moves in coaches. And if this coach is going forward, your children are watching you. But you don't want to live a godly life, but you want to raise godly seeds. Sometimes I want to ask, what type of weed are you on? Like, it doesn't make sense. Right? You want to raise godly seeds? Godly seeds come from godly parents. And so if you, if you see other people raising godly seeds, you don't have to be jealous of them. You just have to come out of your flesh and say, you know what? This is an inspiration. Not to be jealous of the person. You see someone's business is thriving. And you are looking for ways to pull it down. I'm talking about Christians. I'm not talking about the unbelievers. I'm talking about Christians. Who say they are Christians? Because I've started to question them. Are you truly a child of God that you want to pull somebody down? And so, the Lord is saying in Ephesians 5, 16, he says, make the most of every opportunity in these evil days. <laughs> when last did you preach the gospel? With your life. Someone once said, he said, you, you don't have to say it sometimes. People are watching you. You are the Bible that people read. Let people come. If you've been in your office for a year, nobody comes to ask you, how are you doing it? Something is wrong. That means you are joining them to pull down the CEO. You are joining them to gossip. You are joining them to talk about other colleagues so they can't tell if you are a light or darkness, if you are a Christian or not. He's letting us know. He's saying, make the most of every opportunity that you have in these evil days. Make the most. You see your children. You've been telling them, read your Bible. They say, oh, mom, your home is bothering us. Monday, you're bothering them. Tuesday, bother them again. You know why you have to keep bothering them? So that the evil ones, Disney is not in partnership with you. YouTube is not in partnership with you to raise your children. And so if you don't bother your children, they are pulling it out there for you every day. If your children are not studying the word of God, if they don't want to hear about the word of God, what are they doing? Playing Minecraft? Make the most of every opportunity. I used to be so upset with my husband. You know, if we... We, we can't be eating, and if my children just ask any question, he will bring it to the Bible. I'll be like, oh, God, this man, all the time, <laughs> he will bring the scripture to them. He will say, oh, do you know, this is what Daniel and his friends did. He will just bring everything back to the Bible. Do you know how the Lord saved me from that? 
I was studying my Bible one day. In Deuteronomy chapter 6, he says, as you are walking, be talking about it to your children. As you are eating, be talking about it to your children. As you are everything you are doing, this is what the word of God is saying. Every opportunity, let them be tired of it. I always tell my children, I say, one day, when you stand and you're preaching, you say, oh, my mom used to bother me with that. Yes, and I started to learn from what my husband was doing to them. Like, oh, every opportunity, he's talking it. He's speaking scriptures over there. He's saying, no, 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 <laughs> don't do that. This is what the pagans do. No, as a child of lies, this is what is expected of you. This is why he's letting you know that make the most of every opportunity. When you want to love on your children, love them and say, oh, this is what God would do to me. For that child that doesn't believe, let them be hearing. Don't be a hypocrite. It is, not, it is when you want to rebuke them that you bring scriptures. No, when you love them, bring their scriptures. Let them know. So the day that they decide to read your Bible... They will begin to say, I remember when my nephew um, in England, he went to college. I was, I was, you know, he showed me his room. We were all excited. And um, he said, I said, oh, I can't see a Bible. Do you have a Bible there? He said, no, Auntie Rose, I don't have a Bible. I said, oh, no, I'm going to buy you a Bible. He said, I'm not going to read it. I said, it doesn't matter. I want you to have that Bible in your room. You know why? I'm confident that one day, because I am praying for him, that one day he will be bored. He will just say, let me go and open this. Anyway, he said, I said, oh, don't worry. I'll buy you a Bible. Oh, you will send it from America? I said, it doesn't matter how you get to your room. I will buy you a Bible. I said, until then, do you have a phone? He said, yeah. I said, can you download the Bible app? No, I said, oh, do you love me? He, you see, this is what the scripture says. He says, make, make, what did he say? Let me know. He said, make the most of every opportunity. This is what I do to them. I said, do you love me? Oh, yeah, I love you. I said, download the Bible app. You see, I was, I was building <laughs> what I would do. I said, download the Bible app. Yeah, he downloaded the bills. Like, oh, oh, I would, I would just do it for your sake. I said, do it for my sake. One day you will do it for the Lord's sake. I'm not in a hurry. As long as you don't go to hell, that's what matters to me. I'm being intentional when it comes to that. And he downloaded the Bible app. I was like, ah, do you know that Bible app? You know what they have? They have verse of the day. You don't need to read your Bible. Just read that verse. It's just one verse a day. One verse a day. It's like, oh, I'm doing I said, oh, you love me, remember. Love is not in words. It's in action. You have to show me that you love me. This is what I want from you. He's like, oh. So he downloaded it. And then my last thought was, okay, verse of the day. I said, you need notification. Set your notification for that verse of the day to come in. He said, oh, mm, when should it come in? He started asking me. I said, ah, when, whenever. I don't want to control that. He was happy that I didn't want to control his life. <laughs> he, said, I said, oh, he said, okay, maybe first thing in the morning. You see, he started to get in, in line. He said, first thing in the morning. He said it to come first thing in the morning. And then <laughs> we prayed, and the Lord gave me a word for him. Isaiah 30, 21, I will never forget that you will always, since you are in this college, this university, you will always hear the voice of the Lord that will tell you this is the way to turn. Whether it's to right or to left, you, would, you will make the right decision. Do you know Three months after, he told me, he said, you know, I always hear this voice. Go back to your room. <laughs> I was like, oh, praise the Lord. He said, Auntie Rose, you know, sometimes I just hear this voice. I just hear this voice that will tell me, no, how they don't do that. Go back to your room. Do you know? I hear this voice. I said, you hear this voice. How? Have you been reading your Bible? He said, ah. I've been reading the verse of the day. When it comes, I'll be like, oh, is that in the scripture? Oh, okay. You know Why? Especially if your teenagers are on TikTok. 
Motivational speakers are on there. They're on TikTok. And they are using the word of God to act like they are the ones who know it. They are using the principles of God. So your teenagers, they've seen it. When I started reading, when I introduced Joshua to the Passion Translation of Proverbs, it was like, what? This is from the Bible as it is. If you open your Bible, it's there. It's there. And so, I want us to know, I'm sharing this because we are in, living in the evil days. We have to make use of every opportunity that we have. We have to look, we have to look beyond ourselves. We have to start focusing on, on the kingdom of God, bringing souls to the kingdom of God. The enemy is after our children. He's after marriages. Can you see how people glorify divorce? How children are being disobedient to parents and they are being rebellious. And we have to be very intentional when it comes to these times. And so he's letting us know, make use of every opportunity. <laughs> he says in verse 7, don't act thoughtlessly but understand what the Lord wants you to do do you understand what the Lord wants you to do when it comes to any area of your life remember it says wake up we started talking about awake so when the scripture is saying this is time for you to wake up do you understand what the Lord is asking you to do in the season do you understand your season do you understand in your marriage as, as, as a man that you are the head of the household? I'm not talking about the alpha and the omega of your household, that you want to dominate everybody. I'm talking about being the leader of your household. And Jesus told us, he says, a leader serves. Do you understand that you are in the household to serve your wife and your children? My favorite scripture, you guys know where I tell my husband, First Peter 3, 7, honor me so your prayers will not be hindered. My husband learned that long time ago. Long time ago he learned it. And I'm not kidding you, right? So when my husband honors me, I honor him as well. It's not one-way traffic. Like, you honor me, you clean my feet, bring me breakfast in bed. <laughs> I was sharing with uh, Sister Nancy. I said, I won't get breakfast in bed. It's not one of the things that um, I, will happen to me. If I get breakfast in bed, it will be from the store or from the restaurant. <laughs> That's not my husband's <laughs> area of expertise. <laughs> and I recognize that. I recognize that cooking is not for him at all. I can cook, make the mess in the kitchen, and my husband will clean for me spotlessly. You see, he doesn't have a problem with that. This is how you enjoy your marriage. When you guys know each other's strength. And you focus, you magnify the strength. When I come downstairs, my husband has cleaned spotless. I'm not kidding. You see, they're talking to themselves like, did you hear that? <laughs> be, this is what the word of God will do for you. To, for you to be the doer of the word. When, it, when I come downstairs and it's cleaned the room or it's cleaned the kitchen and it's spotless, you know, when I see him, I'll be like, ah! Ah, this is the best husband in the entire universe. I start to praise him, my king. And you know what? He's going to do it the next day. <laughs> Trust me. I, I, this year, I intend to run a wife academy for, for wives. <laughs> you know, I am not kidding. My husband, you know, um, I have come to understand him. Not all husband, but I understand my husband. He is a child of God. God loves to be praised. Amen? And so if God loves to be praised, he, my husband loves to be praised. When I look at him, he's finished dressing up. I say, look at my pastor. Hey! Give me, me, give me, me, give me. And I start giving him, like, okay, how am I looking? I say, ah! Mm -hmm. On a scale of 1 to 10, you are 12. It's like, yes. Okay, okay, okay. Now I can go on stage and say, mm, you can go on stage. So we honor each other. 
This is what God is saying here. Do you know how you should be living? Because your marriage should be glorifying God. The way you raise your children should glorify God. The way pe- when, when God looks down, God should be saying, I'm, I'm proud of these ones. I'm proud of these ones. When God looks into your home, it's not like your home is full of fights all the time. Your home has become a court house. Be a wise woman. I don't know who that is for. For some reason, we went into marriage today. In verse 17, he said, Don't act thoughtlessly, but understand what the Lord wants you to do. Understand your role as a wife, as a mother, as a father. Understand your role as a child of God. It doesn't matter what age your children have. Understand your role. Don't look at your children and say, oh, she's 29 now. She can do whatever she likes. No, you are a mother. Understand your role as a mother that you have in the, in the, in the life of that child for a reason. You are in the life of your siblings for a reason. Don't look at your siblings and say, oh, they can do whatever they like. They are adults. No. He's letting us know that we are in the evil days, that we should make use of every opportunity. So when you preach the gospel, don't look at going to preach the gospel in Atlanta. Look at your family. Who is not born again yet? Start praying for them. When you see them, just start talking. You don't have to say, oh, you don't have to quote scriptures to them. Oh, when I was reading my Bible today, this is what I got out of it. Oh, when I was studying, you know, you know, they can share with you. Oh, when someone shares good news with you, say, wow, I rejoice with you. Just like the Lord said, rejoice with whoever is rejoicing. When they share bad news with you, don't be, ha! Do you know that sickness? It killed somebody I know at work. Don't let it come out from your mouth. You are a child of God. Be the one that will share the good news. When someone says, I am tired, I am so stressed. Don't be the one to say, oh, me too. (laughs) Oh, you are not as tired as I am. No. Be the one to share that good news of our Lord Jesus Christ. And say, oh, you are tired. The Lord is your strength. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Let us pray. We will pray for strength. Be the one to share that good news. Don't act thoughtlessly. But understand what the Lord wants you to do. And it says, don't be drunk with wine. Because that will ruin your life. Instead, be filled with the Holy Spirit. Because of time, I want us to stand up now and pray and ask the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, fill me up. Holy Spirit, fill me up. Holy Spirit, fill me up. Hey, la Korean this satele mo Korean da sata. I have not come to hear a good message. Holy Spirit, fill me up. Because when the Holy Spirit fill you up, this is how you can go about doing what God has called you to do. This is why you can go around doing that which will glorify God. This is where you get wisdom from. When you wake up, you ask the Holy Spirit, what are you expecting me today? Fill me up, Holy Spirit. Fill me up, Holy Spirit. I want to read a scripture the Lord gave me today. Jeremiah 4, 22. It says, my people are foolish. This is the Lord speaking. And do not know me, says the Lord. It says they are stupid children who have, I'm reading the Bible, guys. They are stupid children who have no understanding. It says they are clever enough at doing wrong. But they have no idea how to do it right. This is why we ask for the infilling of the Holy Spirit. And say, Holy Spirit, fill me up. If you are struggling with praying, I want you to come outside. I I, I want you to come outside for impartation. This is the time if you are struggling to read your Bible. Because Joshua 1 says, meditate on it. Meditate. This book of the Lord shall not depart from your hand. Maso 
I want you to come out here. If you need prayers, you are saying, I'm struggling to pray. This is what prayer will do for you. When you are praying, when you are praying, the Lord will begin. You are fellowshipping with the Lord. And when the enemy is not, when the enemy has stolen that time of prayers from you, that means you, 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 you won't know what to do. Bible says, men always ought to pray and not to faint. If you're not praying, you're going to be fainting. You will be tired. You will be weary. You will be confused. You will not know what to do. But when it comes to praying, when you are communing with the Lord, I tell you what, I have a beautiful relationship with the Lord. If I am stressed, I can speak to the Lord and it will answer me. And so stretch out your hands and say, Father, I surrender myself to you. Tonight, let a spirit of prayer and supplication rest upon me. Let me be able to sit down and study the word of God because when you sit down and study the word of God, you have the knowledge, you know the Lord. He says they that know their God, they shall be strong and they shall do exploits. It is your new knowing the Lord that you can be strong. Father Lord, I pray for the spirit of prayer and supplication to rest upon her in the mighty name of Jesus. From tonight, you will not struggle to pray in the name of Jesus. Every distraction, the Lord take it away from you. You will take your eyes away from the things that don't matter because the Lord will handle your problems for you. The spirit of prayer and supplication rest upon you, my sister. From tonight, you will begin to pray. You will not able to be quiet. It's broken. Keep saying it. Keep saying it. Come on. Come on. Speak a heavenly language. No one can do it for you, sis. You have to do it yourself. Like I say, say, like who they do, sata, le kuri anda sata. Ma say, le ma say, say le kuri anda sata. Le ma say, say le anda sata. Stay here. Don't go back to your seat. Continue to pray. Le kani anda sotori ande. Le kani ma sotori anda. The spirit of prayer and supplication rest upon you. La ma say, say le anda. Le ma just say, say. When you are lying on your bed. Get up. When you're lying on your bed, get up. Because it's time for you to pray. It's time for you to war. So get up. Spirit of prayer and supplication and rest that upon you. You need to move. You need to move. You will not only study the word, you will pray. You will pray. You will birth nations in your place of prayer. Strength in the name of Jesus. Supernatural strength in the name of Jesus. Supernatural strength in the name of Jesus. Lema Satorianda. Lema Kuriandi Sekerebo. La Kuriana Nama Seseriana. Yes, Lord. The spirit of prayer and supplication rest upon you from this minute. From this minute, in the name of Jesus, you will not struggle. You will not struggle to pray. Listen, God wants to show you great things. Because sometimes we have to understand the incentive. When you know that, oh, God wants to show me great things, but I have to pray to get it. You're going to do it. And so, Father, from tonight, I pray for supernatural strength. In Jesus' mighty name. Father, 
Suturiane, hey, Kalana, Mama, 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 every crooked past straight in the mighty name of Jesus. Ah, you will remain focused. La Kuriana, Ceseriana, Lema, Ceserian, do Suturiana, the spirit of prayer and supplication rests upon you from this minute in the mighty name of Jesus. You will testify, you will testify in the mighty name of Jesus. Lema, Ceserian, do. The spirit of prayer and supplication. I pray for strength for you. In the mighty name of Jesus, you will not be tired. In your mind, you will not be tired. In the mighty name of Jesus. Lama Ah, you always bring good tidings. You always bring good tidings. I pray for the fresh infilling. Of the Holy Spirit upon you. La mi suturiandi le kuria ma suturianda le ma sete le kuria no sataliende. Oh, your strength comes from the Lord. Not in anything, not in anybody. Ah, in the mighty name of Jesus, be ignited. In the name of Jesus, be ignited tonight. In the mighty name of Jesus. Ah, la kuria ni suturia ne ye kuria na sata. Le ma sete ye kuria na sete le bo kuria na sata. Father Lord, I thank you. I thank you for this once you have visited them. Ah, Lord, I give you praise. Le ma no suturia na le kuria na sate le le bo. La ku suturia ne le kuria na sata. No more will you walk in the flesh anymore. Le ma sita le kuria na. Holy Spirit, fill her up. Oh, fresh baptism of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> fresh baptism of the Holy Spirit. Fresh baptism of the Holy Spirit. Lami kuria mi suturi and then ye kuria na sata. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. Lama seteri and u satali and a mesetele kuria na sata. Leka lele mo sotori and u satali. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, Father. Walk on the heart. Hey, la kuria and the sis. Hey, le ma kuria and this is her. Oh, divine visitation. Tonight you will experience it. In the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we give you praise. Ma sete le bo kuria and the sata. Hey, woman of favor. La kuria and the sata. Hey, spirit of spirit, spirit of prayer and supplication. Rest upon you this minute in the mighty name of Jesus. Hey, for you are a sign to your generation. You will not be silenced. La kuria mi sete le ande. Le ma sete le le mo satori ana. Lika no satori ana. Oh, sweet Holy Spirit. In filling of you, oh God, fill her up, fill her up, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. Le kaiyando sotori ande, mazedele le mo kori ana sotori ana. Oh, Father, Lord, us give you praise, give you praise, give you praise, give him praise. Give the Lord a big shout of praise, praise him, exalt him tonight. Le ma seteri andu la kori ana. The Lord is doing amazing things tonight. If you are wanting a visitation, wherever you are, lift up your voice. Lift up your hands and say, Father, visit me. Ah, visit me. The presence is so strong right now. Visit me, Lord. Visit me, Lord. Let me not miss my visitation, Father. Ah, thank Thank you, Father. Thank you because there will be testimonies. There will be testimonies, Father. We give you praise. We exalt you. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Family, we're not done. We're going to press into this. Y'all already standing. I want to encourage us. With just a few scriptures, the book of Revelation, chapter 3, verse 14. And to the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, These things says the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know your works. 
that you are neither hot nor cold. I could wish you were cold or hot. So then, because of your lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will vomit you out of my mouth. We give God praise for the reading of his word as it has been ministered to us what the cold and the hot is. The cold, either you are on the mountaintop or you are before the altar in the flame. I give God praise because the woman of God has come to set the foundation. She has ministered to us the word, and I declare over us that we shall not be found in the streets. We shall not be found lukewarm, but we shall be found on the mountaintop. We shall be found at the altar, to and fro, ministering, watching what the Lord will say unto us as we are corrected, as we see what the Spirit of the Lord, as we hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying unto the churches. I give God praise for us, for verse 19 reads, as many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Therefore, be zealous and repent. Look at this work that has gone on here. Verse 21 reads, to him who overcomes, I will grant to sit with me on my throne as I also overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. The Lord has a place for us and he has prepared it for us. And sometimes, you see, the woman of God came and she nailed scripture on top of scripture on top of scripture. We know this is our season to be in the word, to elevate ourselves in reading and studying the word, all right? We believe on the promises of God. We know what he has promised us in our own lives, and that's good. But in order to create the atmosphere around us to receive or to posture ourselves for those things, we must be declaring the word. The word of God declares that in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. The scripture declares, I have come that you have life, and that more abundantly. Because you are in the Lord, wherever you go, you are supposed to bring life. But you have to activate the word in what some may call your aura. You have to activate that word so that that presence be tangible around you. And that's what we're gonna do tonight. And I'm so thankful for what was ministered to us just now because as I was at the altar, I was re reminded of a dream that I went into several months ago. Actually, this was two years ago now where I was in the marketplace and I heard the roar of the Lion of Judah, and I knew it was the Lord. I did not see him, but I knew he was behind me. And as he roared, I said, I got to get to where the Lord has prepared. And as the roar of the Lion went forth, some were not as discerning. They weren't really hearing. They were still going to and fro, but then some were running helter-skelter. And the ones that were assigned to me, I rushed into a room and sealed them behind doors and other rooms and closets, you name it. And by the time that I had locked them in and locked myself in, the Lord himself came as a lion and said, look, those that come after this, if you don't get them out of here, I'm going to come and tear this place up. Family, we've come to a place to where the door of the ark is shutting. It's shutting. And the Lord has been merciful to this house. It is time to get our house in order. All right? What you know ain't of God, get it out of your midst. Let every profane thing be removed from your midst and meditate on what is good. Those things that are true, that are noble, those things above and be elevated because the Lord is merciful. We're going to remind ourselves of the word concerning us. And I want you all to repeat after me. We're going to spend about 60 seconds praying in the Holy Ghost. Go ahead and open your mouth. Come on. She tear up us. Buy your damn ass. She ain't no more. So, Kia, my tear about to cheer for a ride. Yeah, I'm a soda. 
Bora my ear, Kiamo, so they my ear for she air them a so they are my say. Bada my share, Kiamo, so the bear fear, Kiamo, so they my share, my tota. Bora Fayada, my so old. I'm saying pray like you ain't never prayed before. She are ear, sure, my Kiamo, totia, my ear for Adibosa. Buy her for quarter. Because we're going to ride this prophetic wind in this house tonight. She are fire and dear boku. She I am a mosoda, my yeah, 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 mosoda. Fair I am a mosoda. Fear I am a siat, a mosoda, my yes, yada. Sek yada, my yeah, for you, my saint, yada, my sohoda. Yeah, cross the eight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on. Sit I am a yet, yeah, my shoulder. Oh, she had a bass. She, I am also Oti Abasa. Let tonight be a catalyst for you declaring the word. I am a masoda. Yeah, I am a kura mayisa. Hallelujah. She, if I am a mosa. Family, I'm going to read. And y'all are going to repeat after me. This is Ephesians 2, 6. I sit in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. As you're declaring this word, I want you to see yourself. Because the Lord has had me in this space. Sometimes it is just perspective. You need to know where you are. And if you're seated in heavenly places and you know that you're seated in heavy places and heavenly places, then you know everything is beneath you. You are in Christ Jesus and you see all. The word declares that I have an unction from the Holy One and I know all things. We'll continue to read Ecclesiastes 8, 4. I am a king where my word is, there is power. Hallelujah. Revelation 1, 6. I am a king and priest to the Lord. My God and Father. Isaiah 7, 15. I eat curds and honey. And know to refuse the evil. And choose the good. Matthew 10, 16. I am as wise as serpents. And harmless, and harmless as doves. Luke 4, 18, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. I am anointed to preach the gospel to the poor, to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind. To set, to set at liberty those who are oppressed. Who are oppressed. John 10.10, 10, I, I have life, and that, more and that more abundantly. Ephesians 2.5, I am made alive together with Christ. I am made alive together with Christ. Matthew 6.10, your, your kingdom come, your will be done, will be done. on earth, as it, is in heaven. as it is in heaven. Isaiah 45, 11. O Lord, o Lord the, Holy the Holy One of Israel and his maker, and his maker. Reveal, to reveal to me things to come concerning your sons, concerning your sons. and concerning the work of your hands, work of your hands. That, I that I may command you. Come on, you better get excited. Deuteronomy 6, 10 through 11. So it is. So it is. The, Lord God the Lord my God brings me into the land of which he swore to my fathers, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and has given me large and beautiful cities, which I did not build, Come on, how many want to be blessed and just walk into, all right, what has been prepared for you? As we continue to read, houses full of all good things, which I did not feel, hewn out wells 
which I did not dig. Vineyards and olive trees, which I did not plant. I eat and am full. Isaiah 23, 18, the gain and pay of Tyre. That's right. It's set apart for the Lord. It is not treasured nor laid up. For Tyre's gain is for me. Who dwells before the Lord. To eat sufficiently. And for fine clothing. Let's talk to God. She tiara ma su ota. She tiara ma ma si e kiara ba ba si e tuara ba si ita. Keep talking. Keep talking. She tiara ma si e tiara ma ma si e tuara ba si. You see, these promises are for you. Shukura ma ma si e tuara ba si ita. But all it takes is for you to open up the book and declare it. Shoot ya rababa si ita. The woman of God has declared over you the spirit of prayer, of reading your word. Now it is time to do. Shoot ya rababa si ita. Ya rababa si ita. Ya rababa so ota. Ya daba ye kya for your tiama so ota abase eda. Ba rababa si ita. Father, we give you praise for this season. We mount up our high places. We walk upon our high places. Shoot ya rababa si ita. Father, we give you praise. Praise for we are the head and not the tail. So Ramayede, Father, we thank you for the anointing that you have placed upon us, O God. Father, we thank you for we are blessed because we are the seed of Abraham. We thank you that heaven is open over this place and we have come to the company of innumerable angels. See, if you know you've come to the company of of innumerable angels, you act like it. You come expecting to hear. You come expecting to receive. You come expecting to be carried away in the realm of the spirit. Father, we declare that we shall not miss you as you go up. Oh God, but the mantle is ours. And the double portion is upon us. See, Aya. In the mighty name of Jesus, I declare that eyes be open, that supernatural discernment be increased upon your children tonight. Oh God, as they journey through your word, understanding what the Spirit of the Lord is saying unto the churches. Oh God, that they may know the signs of the times. Father, we thank you for your mercy, for it endures forever. For there's nothing like it, oh God. For you delight in mercy. For your mercy is new morning by morning. Father, we thank you for your word, for no evil shall befall us, nor shall any plague come near our dwelling. Father, we thank you for your word declares that you have erected a hedge of protection all about us. Father, we thank you that your favor surrounds us as a shield. Father, your word declares that you are our shield and buckler. Father God, we thank you that we have received the mind of Christ. I declare the mind of Christ over your children tonight. Come on, build yourself up. Because family, I want us to catch a revelation of the privilege that has been given us because we are in Christ. The Lord has done it. I want you to say to yourself, Lord, you have done it. You have done it. Father, we give you praise for the finished work of the cross. For the finished work of your word, for your word declares that your word, oh God, is forever settled in heaven. Come on. Yeah, 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 yeah. Otiara Masi Etiara Basi. Sutiara Baba Basi Ite. 
Lipsy family, you got to declare it. What did we do months ago? We declared healing in our limbs. And what was the instruction from the man of God? That we go outside, that we go to a window, and we declare our healing in our arms, that we may receive the blessing. What did we do? We commanded the wind to bring us a blessing. I don't want us to forget that. Because the blessing is upon us. It is upon our doorstep. Come on. Lift your voice. Come on. The word is so good. Hallelujah. We're going to declare this last scripture. God is good. If this don't get you turned up, I just don't know. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28. I want you to repeat after me. And when you're declaring this word, when you go home, you got to know it. You got to act like this. This is me. I'm coming in my father's name. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 28. Repeat after me. Now it has come to pass. Oh, come on. Because I diligently obey the voice of the Lord, my God, and observe carefully all his commandments, which he commands me today, that the Lord, my God, has set me above all nations of the earth. Watch this, verse 2. And all these blessings come upon me and overtake me because I obey the voice of the Lord, my God. Watch this. I am blessed in the city and blessed in the country. The fruit of my body, the produce of my ground, and the increase of my herds, the increase of my cattle, and the offspring of my flocks are blessed. My basket and my kneading bowl are blessed. I am blessed when I come in and blessed when I go out. The Lord has caused my enemies who rise against me to be defeated before my face. They come out against me one way and flee before me seven ways. Come on now. The Lord has commanded the blessing on me in my storehouses and in all to which I set my hand. And he has blessed me in the land which the Lord my God has given me. Hallelujah. We're wrapping this up. The Lord has established me as a holy people to himself. Just as he has sworn to me as I keep the commandments of the Lord. My God and walk in his ways. All peoples of the earth see that I am called by the name of the Lord and they are afraid of me. The Lord grants me plenty of goods. Come on. In the fruit of my body. In the increase of my livestock. And in the produce of my ground. In the land of which the Lord swore to my fathers to give me. The Lord opens to me his good treasure, the heavens, to give the rain to my land in its season and to bless all the work of my hand. I lend to many nations and do not borrow. The Lord has made me the head and not the tail. I am above only and not beneath. 
I heed the commandments of the Lord my God, which he commands me today, and am careful to observe them. I will not turn aside from any of the words which you command me this day, to the right or to the left, to go after other gods to serve them. Let's give the Lord a shout of praise. Hallelujah. Come on. Come on. You better act like you know it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to get ready for communion. I want you to meditate on this word while the communion is getting passed out because you got to understand the word of God is so sweet. Thank you, sir. The word of God is so sweet. And all it takes is for you to declare and do the word. I'm telling you, so many testimonies, we have seen it. Several times in prayer now, I have seen men saying, bye-bye, you have done it. You have done it. It is our testimony. I'm telling us, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Because it is upon us. I'm trying to tell you, see, you know, the woman of God hit on it. When, you know, she said, hey, you know, the Lord come, I'm, I'm not ready just yet. And I understand that. I, I, I understand the heart of that because you know what you perceive, what the Lord has placed on your heart to do. And sometimes it's just like, Lord, I, there's more stuff I got to do. But we got to know that before the Lord come, he going to make sure his children are in place. Because what we got to do, we got to rule and reign with him. All right. We got to rule and reign with him. And so the Lord is positioning us. Look at these blessings that are coming our way in the next few months. Ask yourself, Lord, what would you have me do with this? All right. Ask now, because the scriptures say, ask me concerning my sons. Are you not one of his sons? Come on, somebody. Ask the Lord concerning you, concerning your household. Lord, I perceive this. What would you have me do with it? Come on. It's time to implement the kingdom of God here. We thank God for the communion. Hallelujah. This communion is so sweet. Oh, come on, somebody. It's so sweet. Father, truly you have met with us tonight. There's none like you, O oh God. Lord, just a few thousand years ago, you sent your son. You looked upon us, O oh God, and you had mercy. And you said, I must sin. I'm going to send my son in their stead. Father, for you have come and sent your son in flesh, anointed to preach and to teach, for he came, O God, and laid hands upon the sick, and they recovered. And Lord, he died and rose again for us. And Lord, even declared unto us that we shall do greater works. Father, we thank you for your Holy Spirit, for we know this is a reason why you went back up. For your word declares that had you not gone, then you would not have been able to have left the comforter. And so, Lord, as we take this communion, we think upon your works. We think upon what you have done, the time that you walked this earth, that you spent with the disciples of God, the apostles, these same ones whose scriptures we read from this very day. Lord, truly, you see about us. For, Lord, you have not left us empty-handed. You have not forsaken us. Father, we thank you for the body of the Lord Jesus that body that was broken for us. Father, we thank you for the blood of Jesus, the blood that was shed for us. That blood, oh God, that's very much alive, is very much active, oh God. It speaks in our behalf. We thank you for the voice of the blood of Jesus that speaks, oh God, better things than that of the blood of Abel. Let it speak in our behalf tonight. O oh, blood of Jesus, speak afresh in our behalf tonight. For where would we be? 
Baba God, you are the only one to share fire up. We give you praise, Lord. Lord, let the taking of your communion, this remembrance of what you have done, be pleasing in your sight. Let us eat and let us drink. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. I'm excited. Praise the Lord. If I, hallelujah. What a night tonight. What a night of just being in the word. Uh, if my brother Charles will help us with the offering slide, we'll go ahead and um, worship in our giving and wrap up. Hallelujah. While the giving details are being placed upon the screen, continue to think about the goodness of God. What do you want to give tonight? What has the Lord placed on your heart? What's the sign of your worship tonight? We'll give everyone a couple of more seconds and we'll lift up this seed unto the Lord. Hallelujah. Father, we give you praise for indeed you give seed to the sower. You own the cattle on a thousand hills, O oh God. Lord, the silver and the gold is all yours. The mountains belong to you, O oh God, O oh God. You know the number of hairs on our head, O oh God. You know our days, the number of them. Father, as we give back unto you what you have given us, let these offerings, O oh God, be pleasing. For, Lord, your word declares to test you in the tenth. To test you in the tithe, O oh God, and see that you will open up the storehouses of heaven, O oh God, and that you will give us a blessing that we don't have room enough to receive. Father, we declare that all glory and honor belong to you. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's give God praise. Now, I was looking for the woman of God, but my wife and I were just talking. When, uh, when is Pastor Moses and Pastor Rosemary going to do a marriage conference? Something. Because the word that was coming forth, we know that this is a house where uh, restoration goes forth. The mighty hand of God is here. And so we're so thankful for how the Lord has dealt with us and how he has ministered to us tonight. And so I want to give us one reminder. This is for my fellas. This Saturday, we'll be back at it. Men's breakfast. Check the WhatsApp. Come on, celebrate. We're trying to do our best to stay in communion and fellowship. And so we'll be back Saturday, 9 a.m., same place. We'll have the details out in the chat, and then we will go from there. Otherwise, we will be back at it this Saturday. And don't forget, prayer, Wednesday night, 9 p.m. on Instagram. You don't want to miss this. What you have gotten here tonight, I want you to take it home. Run with it, okay? Many, much of which we have been petitioning the Lord for a fresh infilling, all right? It has happened tonight, but now you need to go home and exercise it, okay? Don't let this go cold, amen? Hallelujah. Father, we thank you again for this evening, how you have granted unto us mercy. Lord, we now ask of thee again for traveling mercies as we go to and fro. All glory and honor belong to you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Everyone have a blessed night.